Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso, and today we're gonna to talk about a pretty niche standard uh, that has been proposed by the FASB around induced conversions of convertible debt instruments. Um, so again, this is a pretty niche area where you have a convertible instrument and the, uh, the issuer is going to encourage you and in, do help induce you to uh, convert that. Uh, and so this is something that there has been some questions raised about the existing guidance. And so really looking at those convertible debt instruments for which the conversion privileges were changed to induce conversion, right? Trying to encourage someone to make the uh, conversion happen. Now, this was issued back in December. Again, we've had a lot of topics on the blog pop up. We're still working our way through. We have a few more December ones before we can get to what's happening in 2024. Kind of ordered them in terms of when you needed to comment. Um, and so this one isn't until March. So you still have plenty of time if you're interested. Um, but this is providing guidance for determining whether a transaction should be accounted for as an induced conversion or if it's really just a debt extinguishment um, as part of the uh, settled, a share settled convertible debt. And so when we are making changes to that convertible debt, um, GAAP currently um, does not provide very clear guidance here. Um, and so there have been a lot of questions that have been raised about how to determine whether a settlement of convertible debt uh, at terms that differ from the original conversion term. So we're making a change as part of this. Is it really an induced conversion or is it an extinguishment? And then current gap also does not address how the settlement of a convertible debt instrument that does not require the issuance of equity securities upon conversion. Um, this was, you know, when they originally wrote this, um, it was not as popular to have a cash option as it was to have convertible into shares. And so the timing, you know, that has just happened here, we've had a change in the prevalence of these other types of conversion features. So uh, we're not gonna go into all the nitty gritty here because this is an area that is a little bit more complex, but what is the big picture on the proposal? Um, it is going to allow you to account for a settlement of a convertible debt instrument as an induced conversion. Um, in this scenario, an inducement offer uh, would be required to provide the de debt holder with at a minimum the consideration in form and amount issuable under the conversion privileges provided in the terms of the instrument. And that would be determined as of the date the inducement offer is accepted. So in this way, in order to qualify and be able to account for that settlement as a induced conversion versus an extinguishment. Now, if the convert, uh, convertible debt instrument had been modified um, without being deemed substantially different within the one year period leading up to the offer acceptance date, then they would compare the terms provided in the inducement offer with the terms that were prevalent in that one year period. Um, so it would not change into the other existing criteria that are required to be satisfied in order to account for the settlement transaction as an induced conversion. Um, in addition, it does provide some additional clarifications to assist uh, uh, stakeholders in applying the proposed guidance, in particular around the uh, inducement offer, and incorporates um, elimination or modifies uh, the VWAP uh, formula uh, and would not automatically cause a settlement to be accounted for as an extinguishment. And so uh, that is something that was a question that was sort of raised. Uh, it was unclear. And so instead, the entity would assess whether the form and amount of conversion consideration are preserved using fair value um, as of the offer acceptance date. It also clarifies that the induced conversion guidance can be applied to convertible debt instrument that is not currently convertible, so long as it has a substantive conversion feature as of the issuance date and is within the scope of topic 47020. So again, pretty niche um, area, but you know, induced conversions, if we are seeing the right uh, opportunities, uh, they may want to induce that and so we're seeing maybe more of them, which is why the EITF took this up. So in terms of effective date, um, they haven't provided one. They said they're gonna take feedback um, and they're offering either a prospective or retrospective basis for adoption and transition. So as I mentioned, this is not due, comments aren't due until March 18th of 2024. So if this is something that you're interested in uh, and are interested in the difference between the induced uh, option versus the extinguishment option, this is potentially a great option for you to respond to. All right, so that's a wrap this week on the Genuine Learning Blog. I hope to see you next week on the blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.